Hello and welcome for the love of food. Today we're going to be making one of my favorite summertime jams. And now I call it a jam, but really it's more like a coolie because all we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to cook it down a little bit in this pot. Add just a little bit of sugar, about a tablespoon of sugar. And then we're going to put it into a mason jar and we're going to use this in our yogurt or um, maybe on some toast with some ricotta, which is how we've shown it in the past. Not using the best of fruit. You're waiting until your peaches are starting to get, eh, they're starting to get a little mushy, right? Um, the blueberries that you weren't going to use because they just didn't work in a pop um, quite nicely. They're starting to feel a little bit softer. That's what we put into our pot. Same thing with the berries. The berries, they're not fuzzy. If they're fuzzy, don't use them. But they're starting to go, like I'll give you just a little example. I'm going to cut the top off of this one. And you can see how it's just, the flesh is just starting to give. Well, let's get this cooked down before it goes bad. Now, if you open it up and it looks really mushy on a piece of, of the side, then you can always cut that little piece out and just use the rest of the berry. Um, we're going to go ahead and get these into our, let's get those into our, so that you can see in my pot. All right, going to go ahead and put in that one tablespoon of sugar. And that's all I need for this because I don't want it to be an overly icky sweet um, coolest, a, a jam that is like, like childlike. I want this to be flavored with the sweetener from the fruit and just a little bit of added sugar. Now, a lot of times I would use um, monk fruit and sugar mixed. I like to kind of do that just to cut down on the processed sugar, but Again, sugar is sugar as far as I'm concerned for this jam. This fruit has a lot of sugar. What we're going to be doing this is probably having that in some Greek yogurt, which is delicious. But again, you could put this over pancakes. You could put this um, on toast with some uh, regatta or cottage cheese, and it would just be lovely. Next up in the process is we're going to put just a little bit of water, probably about um, a tablespoon of water in it just to kind of get it started. And then we're going to bring it over to the stove and we'll show you what that looks like. All right, so we're over at my stove. I'm going to turn my heat on to a pretty high setting just to get things started in here. And I have a handy dandy little tool that I want to show you. This is a dough cutter, right? A dough blender, a hand mixer for biscuits. I like this because these are little sharp little knife like things. And I'm going to come in in a few minutes and just kind of crush down the berries just to get them kind of broken up a little bit more. Um, we do have these available on our website if you want to buy one. Um, I just happen to think they're fantastic for this purpose. And I also use it when I'm making biscuits. All right, but we're not making biscuits today. Although now that I think about it, this would be delicious on some biscuits. But we're trying to do a, a lower carb um, lifestyle so we're not eating a lot of biscuits right now not that you care about that but anyway um, when this is all done we're going to be storing it as I mentioned in this little mason jar in the fridge we also have these available on our website love of food or on our Amazon page um, I use these constantly in my household to store things and uh, for when I'm cooking all right, let's get back to our peach berry jam, though. I want to go ahead. I can hear it starting to sizzle. If I'm quiet, you can hear it. All right. And then I can go ahead, and I'm going to start. Once I know it's sizzling, I'm just going to break things up just a little bit. I'm just going to come in and press down. And sometimes the fruit sticks in there a little bit. Don't worry about it. Just push it through. Just be careful. It's sharp. And as it cooks, I'll be able to break it down just a little bit more. But I know that it's boiling like that. And so what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and once I bring it to a full boil, I'm going to turn my heat down to about medium low. And we're just going to let this kind of cook. Not for a long time. One of the reasons I like this, especially in the summertime, not only is fresh fruit available, nice 
local peaches and things like that because we live in the south but also because i'm not heating up my house for a long period of time this is not going to cook for long it's not like you got to simmer this for hours we're literally going to let this simmer for about 10 minutes we'll be back to show you when we break it down just a little bit more all right this has literally been simmering five minutes so i'm going to come in here do this hopefully so you can see this and give it just another nice little crush down now you can see that it's starting to cook down we're gonna let this cook for another five minutes and then we'll come in and crush it and stir it and then we're going to set it off to cool. Don't worry that it looks watery. This will, as it cools, that will all kind of solidify once those sugars come together. But again, we're going to let this go for five minutes and we'll be back. See those sugars just bubbling away in that pot? It's starting to smell fantastic too. So I'm just going to come in. I know this is very hot and that liquid is sticky. So this time I'm coming in with a regular spoon. I'm just going to give it a little stir. Again, breaking up anything that I didn't break up really well before. And again, we don't mind nice little chunks of fruit, but that's up to you. isn't going to need much longer. You can tell by the consistency of it that it's starting to get more sauce-like than fruit-like. So we're going to let it cook for about two more minutes. Then we're going to just shut it off and let it cool for about 10 more. We'll be back. All right, our two minutes is up. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and I'm going to move it. Just let it go sit on the back burner. I'll just leave it over there for now. 10 minutes, we'll be back to see what we've got. All right, so we're back. And this has sat for about, I don't know, about seven or eight minutes. But I wanted to show you, see how it's starting to thicken up? It's not as watery as it was. In another five minutes, this is going to be just about the way we want it. But first, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take a little taste and see what we got. Mmm, that is delicious. It's peachy. It's sweet. It didn't need any more than that one tablespoon of sugar that we put into it. And it's going to make a whole jar. All right, we'll be back when we're putting it in the jar. Just a moment. All right, we're back. We're getting ready to put our jam inside the jar. Now, I want to show you this wide mouth funnel. If you don't already have one of these, you need to get one of them. We have them available on our Amazon page. I use this many times a week, sometimes every day, because I'm always putting things into my mason jars. So remember, this peach berry jam was a little bit warm. We were letting it cool just to thicken it, but I want to show you, look how nice and thick that is. Let me make sure I get it all in there. But you might see a little steam coming off of it because it's still a tad warm. That's okay. It's not going to bother anything. But I didn't burn my hands because I used the wide mouth funnel. I didn't spill all over the place because I used my wide mouth funnel. So again, I highly recommend getting one of these. If you don't already, you can order it right off of our Amazon page. All right. So you can tell. Our jam still has a little bit of that thinner liquid on the top, but it's still hot. So as this continues to cool, it will thicken up and it will be amazing. My husband has already walked down here and just said to me, oh, Jan, that smells so good. I know because he's going to have some on top of some yogurt, but he doesn't know. It's got to cool just a little bit more before I put it on that yogurt. All right. And FYI, if you were wondering about any of the other products that we used in our video, um, you saw this little knife. This is called a shun. This is a fantastic knife for dealing with delicate items. Uh, it's a Japanese knife. You can see the symbol on it. 
My friend bought me a set of these. I love them and take very good care of these. Um, they are all forged as one piece of metal. You can learn more about that. We have them. And remember our handy dandy little masher tool that we used that was just a little bit sharp on the bottom um, that's made for cutting dough. And that's how we mashed up our berries and our peaches. All right, so uh, we'll show you a final picture in the end of this, what our peach berry jam uh, looks like or how we use it. And I hope that you'll make this as well. Don't let that fruit go bad in the summertime because even as it starts to turn, you can make something amazing with it. Let's cut out some food waste. Thanks for watching For the Love of Food. All right, I got a hungry husband. He's wanting to have some yogurt with some of this peach berry jam on it. I would have preferred it cooled a little bit longer, but I know he needs to eat. So we're going to scoop a little bit off of here and get this into his yogurt. How much you want to put on is entirely up to you. But look how beautiful that looks. Now, I sometimes like to put a little bit of granola on the top of it too because it gives it just a little bit of crunch that might be missing. You could also use some almonds or some nuts. I know he doesn't care for his this way, so this is the way we're going to serve his. But look, that is fantastic, and it's going to taste amazing.